Welcome back. Today we're going to be covering the most undisputedly, most important, overlooked, most ultimate indicator when it comes to reading order flow, and that is the depth of market. This little thing here, you got two of them here. All right, today we're going to learn what these numbers mean, how to read all these little fluctuations in price. I'm going to give you guys the three most important components that are crucial when reading those ladders that you're seeing those fluctuations in price and how do I interpret them to extrapolate a good entry price and what it is to take a great trade. At the end of this video, you will have the criteria of what it is to read the depth of market like a pro. And you will understand what it is you are looking for to properly identify market aggressor or participants along with sentiment to better refine your trading edge. Plus, I'm even gonna give you guys a little secret on what the NQ does a little hint when the rotations to a high or low end have a tendency to come do a re mean reversion trade. So stay tuned to get that little secret near the end of the video. Just to give you some clarity of what the depth of market really is, it's exactly essentially what's going on inside all these little candles here, right? All the transactions taking place, these are called DOMs or the depths of market. At level two are all the areas, all the participants that are taking place inside each little fluctuation and there's a lot of data that's very important and critical that you as a day trader can utilize to better understand rotations or reversals and so today I'm going to give you covering the three principles that are most crucial to identifying those rotations so you can identify them before they start so in today's video I'm good there's gonna be a quite a lot of examples that I'm gonna be pulling from as the one you're seeing now is from one of my live streams so I do trade live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before the open. So feel free to subscribe if you really want to learn how to read the depth of market to a more granular and real time aspect. Because I do cover this. I comment every single transaction that's coming through, how I'm interpreting it, how I'm taking advantage of these imbalances. As you can see there, there's a trade placed at the low of day there on the NQ looking for a potential reversal. And those three things, that reversal that I identify that you're seeing live on the right side on the NQ there has to do with the three principles that I'm going to cover. And those threes are price, pace, and participation. Okay, I'm gonna break down what each one means. And ultimately, at the end of this video, you should have a better understanding on how to read those, what to look for, take initiative with this information, and extrapolate profits from the market. So number one is always gonna be the most important, that is price. You must always consider the, what price the asset is trading at. And what that means for either the bulls or the bears, depending on the rotation and price you're anticipating. Identifying this first will be the key to adjust expectations of the move from a general zone. So for the sake of simplicity, there's many ways to identify important areas of price. Uh, but the simplicity is I'll cover one price area of interest normally in any given day is going to be the overnight session low or the overnight session high. You must understand that the expectation as price hits these areas the reaction can be one of two ways. Either we start to slow down into the area, so you'll see price volume start to dry up going into these areas of interest, or potentially hit with a strong pace and bounce immediately. This helps you so you can put on the glasses, so you can filter out the next two most important factors when reading the depth of market. So price being number one, two, the pace is one of the most powerful visuals that I gauge when using when trading the NQ or the ES. I'll give you a little secret since you watched the video until this point. The NQ rotates from a high or low 20 points. So for example, the NQ is trading at 940 and starts to rotate and trade above 960s. That means the rotation to the downside is more than likely over and we're going to start to turn into a mean reversion trade. So as this as this playback starts to unravel in this trade that I'm long, you're going to see what happens once we hit the 960s. There's going to be a lot of rejection taking place on the NQ. Keep an eye as to what happens once the 960s are accepted by the bulls. Rotate starts to squeeze 20 points higher. So that's just something to keep a note of. Something, a little hint or secret that I've noticed after watching the DOMs on the NQ trade for over the course of years. Nonetheless, pace are the rotations in price and how aggressive they are in a certain direction. Okay, identifying those aggressors, participants, whether bulls or bears, in this case we're identifying bulls at the low end of the day, can provide you a huge advantage. You can use those orders or those aggressors to, aggressors to lean on. In other words, place your stop on the other side of those aggressive participants to protect your position. This is a great example of that happening now. You can see that near the low end of the 40s, every time price hits the 40s or mid or low 50s, 
the buyers sweep the market and push it up five to 10 points every single time. So if you're watching this right now, go back, rewind and keep watching the prices rotate. I'm gonna be providing more examples of this throughout the video. So do not fear, there will be other examples on the sell side and on the buy side in the video footage to come. But nonetheless, using those aggressors to your advantage to lean on is gonna be one of those important components when identifying where to place your SOP, which can keep you in a trade longer to really maximize those profits. This coupled with volume can provide you with great insight as to who the real aggressors in the market are, which can provide you clean readings to tell you who has the ball in their court. And I'm gonna go into that right after I cover the most important part, which is gonna be participation. In other words, volume. This is gonna be the one of the most important factors to determine how probable in terms of direction has who has control. Volume is something that is contingent on the time of day. Since the market does go through periods of low volume, so just keep in mind that volume is contingent on time and also the asset that you're trading. Um, the market goes into news events, sometimes liquidity will dry up. Always be cognizant of news events. And then the lunch hours of the day, again, those three hours in the middle of the session, um, usually are really low in terms of liquidity. What is the volume like? What is high volume, right? Will will completely be dependent on the asset that you trade. I personally trade the NQ and the ES, and those two alone have different characteristics as to what is defined as high volume, since they both have different levels of liquidity. Now, I'm not gonna go into the cover what is high volume. That is something I cover in my live streams or in a potential future video. So feel free to subscribe if you wanna learn more. In the meantime, we're gonna be covering I'm gonna be dissecting with you in the moment, pulling from live footage, how I'm interpreting these DOMs, examples of these three principles, how to use them to identify price rotations and what it means to interpret or look at these ladders and extrapolate data from it. From now, I'm gonna pause here and just gonna give you some commentary. As you can see here, the 60s are being accepted here on the NQ. Right, 20 points from the low as mentioned. What starts to happen thereafter is going to be the key. So we, our low end was 940 just a second ago. That's where the low was at that time. Right, excuse me, 940. We're trading right at the 60. Look what happens as we trade near the 60s on the NQ. We start to hold all those buyers that are there. They are rotating price and creating value 20 points above. Once that starts to happen, price will then start to rotate aggressively and squeeze out all those late sellers. So please excuse the moment movements in the DOM. This is me trading live. I'm pulling the real data feed there. So I'm gonna let the tape roll through and you're gonna see price squeeze 20 points from that very minute. Just giving you further insight that those 20 point rotations from a higher low are critical when capturing a beautiful rotation on the NQ. As you can see those, I'm circling information on the screen, on the DOM as price is moving. This is my live commentary. So feel free to subscribe if you're finding value from this, just from this alone.
So if you watch that all the way through, I did speed it up a little bit for the sake of just kind of keeping up in this video short and condensed and sweet. As long as we held that 20 point rotation at the 60s, 960 from the low end of the 940, we rotated and squeezed up a total of 40 points from there. So just keep in mind, those are some things that nuances that I do notice. I'm gonna be covering a few other examples of the Dom shorting the high of day shortly. All right, and this is going to be from the same exact session of the, of the transaction you just saw from today on the NQ. And as we're approaching near the high of day here on the NQ, you can see what's happening is we're trying to make new highs here. But what you're noticing is the pace, okay? Most important, the pace. What happens when we hit the high of day, right? What does the transactions look like? In this case, you can see that we're inching higher slowly, right? Not aggressively inching higher for new highs, but we're just inching a little bit. The DOM looks relatively weak. The volume is relatively small, right? Anything within double digits, kind of within 15 contracts, three and fives scattered at a high of day, doesn't scream that we're going to continue to push through and make new highs. So those are the things I'm looking at. The final one will be a flush, right? So we're inching up as price is trying to make new highs, all in low volume, and then price slips twice as much and as quickly than it is pushing on the way up. So the, the opposite of what occurred at the lows is now happening at the highs. And so you'll see me push through a transaction to short the market and sometime in the next few seconds. I end up shorting against the current high based on those three things, price, high of day, which will coincide with an overnight session high, the pace of the DOM as we're going in there, and the amount of participation, the lack of participation at the high of day. And you can see there, I'm submitting some orders on the NQ. There are a total of six contracts. I filled three, and you're gonna see me move the order to fill some more down on the way lower. And you see me drag it to 22 and get filled on three more contracts for a total of six micros short. And you see they'll fill me there in just about a few. Okay, and I do have tick compressions on my NQ chart, which is why you don't see the 25, 50 cents, 75 cent um, <clears throat> uh, increments there. I do that because it helps me read the DOM on the NQ much more faster and cleaner. So as you can see here, price is getting absorbed as we hit the entry, right? Right above where the high of day was, where we slipped past and we weren't unable to be, there was no activity, no participation to push price higher, right? And as we're inching up, what does the pace of the DOM look like? Who is the real aggressor at the high of day? Is it the buyers or is it the sellers, right? Or the lack of buying taking place? Ultimately, what you're trying to gauge here is where are the majority of the fluctuations occurring? And if you stare at this long enough, I recommend replaying this over and over, you're going to see that the fluctuations over the course of the pace of the DOM are stronger to the downside, right? So let's just watch that and interpret it a little bit more. You're going to see price start to rotate a little lower, not having enough liquidity or participation to push price higher. So as a result, naturally price has to find more volume to fill on the lower end. And as we start to slip there, you can see the aggression take place. And that's simply what I interpret and what I take from. And I'm going to show you another example after this on me teaching someone live how I interpret the DOM and even entering a few scalp trades on the ES for four points in either direction while I'm explaining that. But in the meantime, observe there as the price skips up. Again, the DOM is trying to push up, but unfortunately the strength to the upside is much weaker. All the movements, all the aggressiveness on that pace of the DOM is to the downside. And I'm constantly taking I'm constantly adjusting and addressing in which direction are the aggression, the aggression moves. Are they up or are they down? And once I identify that at a key price, I take a position against those aggressive orders on the other direction. So in this case, you're going to say, I'm going to let the trade play through and you're going to see price skip a little lower. Fill me about a few, a uh, few of those orders there and we'll skip on to the next example.
you can see there as price is trying to inch up at the 18s price stalls right there no more transactions above every step of the way there's lack of opportunity to the upside unfortunately which isn't allowing price to go any higher I cover this in my live stream extensively, constantly commenting on every single tick coming through, what I'm interpreting it as, what I'm looking for, and why I'm taking profit at those areas. Uh, this has to do with auction market theory, which another video that I do cover this extensively at on how to take profit, how to hold for those big runs. As you might have seen earlier in the previous example, I did have one runner come to us about a 70 points before closing it out for a profit. And the live stream for this one, I'm gonna be covering and leaving in the description below for anyone who wants to watch the live stream, watch me comment live as well uh, in the description. And there it is after a few moments take profit on partial of the position you can see here volume is drying up movements movements are really slow now going into the zone but nonetheless nice 20 point rotation there almost zero drawdown on that position after interpreting all the participation happening at the high of day there and i'm gonna leave it there we're gonna jump to the next one this trade ends up being a 30 point banger again refer to the video in the description you can kind of see where i took profit how the trade went about and I'll catch you in the next example here. Here is another example of another trading session. I tried it long at the 78s on the ES. I did fail. I'm trying to buy that dip buy but this is simply goes back to the same principle as covered before we're going into an area of interest a price okay this is from a session pulled from february 29th 2024 the time is 8 30 a.m pacific you're going to see that the, as we get closer and closer to a key area you're going to see me hover over a certain level and buy it outright as price starts to so slow down right now you're seeing that the pace of the dom really high volume exchange on both of them the pace is really really quick in both directions but watch as we hit a key area here on the nq we're going to start to dip it into the low 900s and watch how the dom reacts there this is going to be something you're going to have to develop over time to watch price patterns or price behaviors fluctuate but as we're hitting the 900s you're seeing that price here starting to teeter or slow down the pace the changes of the rate of change in these price intervals is getting aggressive on the low end but what happens once we hit that 900 right that's going to be a key for me it's like we're no longer made a new low we stopped and bounced five i start to buy that immediately because i'm seeing price bounce five points as soon as we hit that low end of that 900 area which again coincides with a key area from the previous day session february 28th 2024 on the nq price immediately holds that five point pop something that was a change in character change in pace from the sell-off we were experiencing previously we were popping selling off popping selling off no never never holding any single rotation to the upside so as price kind of holds there you're going to see me add to the position because what is happening now is price is now no longer going any lower and it's actually trading five points above its current low right so then i start to initiate a long as well on the ES for that same reason because of the behavior going on on both DOMs here simultaneously which happened to coincide perfectly with the low of day on both now it's no coincidences that I caught the low of day that is certainly there is a formula to this there is a science and I'm simply trying to explain that to you using the DOM there are other other factors involved but this is going to be one of the most critical elements when identifying those lows of day or beautiful rotations to the upside you can see we immediately popped 
already here dom's lagging a little bit because of the huge fluctuation in price but immediately 10 points as soon as i entered the the formula there was what was the pace right aggressive to the downside what started to happen once we hit the 900s the pace slowed down we no longer were aggressively selling we popped five points and we no longer made a new low so price was most important it was a huge area from the previous day pace was starting to change as a sell-off we were going lower and lower aggressively never holding any price level and then as we start to form at the low end volume started to kick in you start to see huge transactions so please review this back and forth over and over you're going to see all those things take place and they happen in a matter of seconds so you have to be quick you have to learn to identify these price behaviors to be able to react accordingly and assume profit to get those beautiful entries on the nq or the es the NQ is a little more difficult because it does move. It's a little more volatile. The ES does give you some leeway as it can move a little more slowly because it's a li more liquid asset. But nonetheless, I recommend watching this time and time again. Get it in some repetition into this price action because these are how highs and lows of days are formed. And that is why I am able to get such great entries at great prices you can see their price is already divided 20 points from my entry within a matter of a minute or two and i've already taken profit off the market i end up writing this out for about 100 points i'm going to leave the description of this video from the live stream at the bottom of the video so you can refer to the commentary as i'm trading we're trading your low of day to get a more real first hand on experience of everything that i'm capturing and explaining as we're selling off but nonetheless, thanks for watching the video. If you guys got any value from this, hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to make sure you guys can see this and actually see me do this in real time, in real live. And look forward to any future videos that I'm going to be dropping along with any other order flow tools such as footprint, volume profiles, and more volume, uh, more depth of market videos to come.